Hi, everybody, and, uh, and thanks for being here and listening to us. So Churchill's a relatively new company. We listed in June of 2021, uh, based on high-grade nickel projects in Newfoundland and Labrador. Both of them came to us through Altius, uh, two-year options on both of them, Florence Lake and Taylor Brook. Just a couple weeks ago, we announced that we have executed the Taylor Brook option now, so that is now 100% Churchill. Florence Lake, we are still, uh, we still have about six months to go on that, but again, it's a project we really, really like. Um, we do envision that we will, uh, we will uh, execute that uh, option as well. The Altius relationship is very, very important. Uh, the guys have been excellent in terms of introductions, contractors, this sort of thing. As well, there's a ton of nickel experience in that company. So, uh, you know, it is a true partnership. They, uh, they are now our largest shareholder. Uh, we have been announcing fairly regularly, in fact, we had a news release this morning on uh, some of our regional work, but, uh, you know, we worked very, very hard this summer on uh, the Taylor Brook project, advanced that significantly. We've had one news release with uh, drilling assays, drilling and trenching assays, and uh, there will be more to come this fall as the last of the drill holes are in the lab now. Florence Lake, we uh, announced the, uh, the early stage, or the the first phase of uh, soil sampling this morning, uh, really, really encouraging property. It's an ex-Falcon Bridge property, had some very, very good results uh, back in the early 90s. And then the, the team itself, uh, my background is consulting, but uh, we've got a couple of very experienced geos on the board, Bill Fisher and uh, Kevin Tomlinson, as well, uh, Jesse Liu Ernsting has just joined our board. She's uh, had a broad background, in fact, worked with Canada Nickel when they, when they launched that. And uh, two very experienced local consultants. Don Evans Lambswood is, uh, is a legend in, uh, in the Voise Bay story. She was there from day one, um, a structural guru, basically. She's helping us figure out the structure of our, our intrusive rocks. And Dr. Derek Wilton was previously at uh, Memorial University. He's still a research professor there, but he's the, the, the Newfoundland and Labrador mineral uh, resource expert. Well, oh. I think I skipped one, but, oh yes. This is what the company looks like corporately as of beginning of November, uh, so uh, market cap, I know, is uh, slightly lower today, but we hope to get it back up into the, the high teens or 20s. Um, you know, relatively tight, obviously a lot of institutions, and, and Altius is currently at 18%. The properties are very well located. Taylor Brook was our first project, so this was, was actually our qualifying transaction. Extremely well located on the island of Newfoundland, about uh, an hour's drive from Deer Lake Airport. Florence Lake, uh, about 20 kilometers inland from, uh, from the Atlantic Ocean. The community of Postville offers a lot of support in terms of ferries and uh, daily flights and that sort of thing. So uh, both projects are, are high grade and that was uh, deliberate. We were definitely looking for high grade projects. They're, um, they're different than what you've been hearing on the, the past few talks. Much, much, much smaller, um, but much higher grade. Tougher to find, but um, you know, they can be incredibly lucrative if, if one does. The grade can withstand uh, you know, commodity cycles and all that sort of thing. If you find a good one, it goes into production, and of course, Ragland and, uh, and Voises Bay are, are perfect examples of that. At Taylor Brook, as I mentioned, we've been doing a lot of work, and a lot of that's being reported. And we have uh, intersected high-grade mineralization, both at surface and, uh, and in drill core, so you know, it's, it's, it's coming along nicely. Florence Lake, very, very high-grade results in the past by Falconbridge, as you can see, that's their intersection. But um, we are basically taking a project that hadn't been worked since the early 90s. We're bringing modern methods to it. Um, our VTEM survey was very, very, uh, very successful, very encouraging, and uh, as we announced this morning, we've got some real, uh, real solid geochem uh, anomalies to start, start chasing. We are uh, in the process of building a camp there. It, uh, everything is being shipped to the near, nearest community postville this uh, winter, such that we can haul everything in over the, uh, over the ice and uh, be constructing in, uh, hauling in in April, constructing in May, and drilling in June is the, is the plan. 
Here's my first struggle. Next slide, please. So we're looking for magmatic nickel sulfide deposits, which is what you've been hearing about. Uh, but they are very rare. And um, you know, here you can see that uh, Canada, uh, judging by the size of those, uh, those symbols, um, Canada and North America is relatively you know, under, underrepresented thus, thus far, despite having world-class uh, you know, nickel camps in Sudbury, Raglan, Thompson, et cetera. So lots of potential, and uh, you know, we're, uh, we're moving forward with, with ours in Newfoundland and Labrador. This is a, you know, a very, very generic model of, of how these things form, but our Taylor Brook project, we're looking at deep-seated mineralization here. So it's similar to Voises Bay, um, you know, similar to Thompson, whereas Florence Lake, you're now looking at exclusive volcanic rocks. So in that case, it's very, very similar to Ragland or the deposits in, uh, in Western Australia or, um, or the deposits you're going to hear about when uh, our next speaker comes up. Next slide, please. So this is some of the stripping we did at Taylor Brook, and uh, we announced the results of the, the channel sampling there, but this is one of our mineralized breaches. It's uh, about 100 meters long, it's uh, 15 to 20 meters wide. It's actually intensely folded, although it's hard for you to see from this angle. So this is one of the, uh, you know, one of the signs that we're on to a, a significant system here that we're chasing. Next slide, please. So Taylor Brook first, this is the discovery outcrop, and that is Dawn Evans Lambswood, the geologist I mentioned. She uh, stayed with INCO and Valet uh, up until a couple of years ago, actually, and became quite senior in the organization. But this is her examining the discovery outcrop back in 2003, and you can see it's a breccia. You can see there's darker, uh, darker units there within that orange rock. And we've actually channel sampled it uh, this summer, and it runs about 3% uh, nickel uh, throughout that thing. Um, but it, the, the breccia is important. So you're seeing that it's, it's not a massive sulfide lens or anything like that yet. We're chasing this breccia back to where, uh, you know, it would all essentially accumulate into, into some sort of uh, pool type structure. Next slide, please. Uh, I mentioned the location, it couldn't really be any better. So I fly into Deer Lake Airport, Olivia, or who's our project geo, or somebody else will pick me up, and we're in camp in less than an hour. The camp was put in to build the hydroelectric line that comes down from Churchill Falls in Labrador. So it runs adjacent to our property. It, um, you know, we have that close by, and we have logging road access uh, throughout our property. So extremely easy exploration, you can see that we've put up some tents there, and, and that's a lot of our core, et cetera, in, in the foreground. Next slide, please. Uh, the exploration model. So, you know, we think we're on to uh, this magmatic conduit type of mineralization. All the signs are there. We're hitting the, great, the right rocks. The chemistry is the appropriate. The structure is what we're figuring out, but, um, you know, we think we're out on the periphery, and that's why the little stars are there in the slide and that we have to move back into that nice red, uh, more massive zone. The best analogies of what we got are probably the Reedbrook deposit at um, Voises Bay, which is now in production. So that is the feeder dike to, uh, you know, to the ovoid zone and, uh, and eastern deeps. Or Tamarack, we think we have something that could be very, very similar to, uh, to Tamarack in, uh, in Minnesota. Next slide, please. So our geology is... Uh, excuse me, is we are in the uh, Canadian Shield Rocks. We're in what's called the Grenville Province. So these are billion-year-old gneisses and schists and things. But immediately adjacent to the known mineralization, that star there, is a very large layered, uh, layered intrusive complex. It's called the Taylorbrook Gabbro. It has never really been studied in depth. There's a BSc and a master's thesis on it and one technical paper. It has um, an age date of 430 million years, so it's Silurian. And um, we have now shown that our host rock at Leyden is the exact same age. And so this changes the story. Past workers thought this was a little dike-related thing in the Grenville, but in fact, it's related to the intrusion of that, uh, that great big layered intrusion. 
And um, it opens up sort of a wealth of uh, exploration models that are applicable to our property package there. So we added Taylor Brook South, for instance, um, you know, very early on in, in, uh, in our exploration. Next slide, please. Bigger picture, um, you can see the Taylor Brook Gabbro there and uh, this what we call a continental suture, so that's called the Deucer's Valley Fault in uh, western Newfoundland, and that's very, very close to the edge of the Canadian Shield. In other words, you're getting into all the, the mobile belts, the tectonic belts that, uh, that created the mountain building. Most of that happened in the Silurian as well, so it's not, you know, not all that surprising that Taylor Brook uh, Gabbro is also Silurian. On the left, you're looking at our mag, and, and what's neat about that is that you can see that the Taylor Brook Gabbro has two lobes to it, two magnetic lobes, uh, a magnetically negative one, what we call the north lobe, and a magnetically positive one, the south lobe. Well, that south lobe, um, it actually correlates really, really well with a known gravity anomaly. So there's sort of a big picture here of, you know, um, of, of a multi-phase intrusion, um, you know, we think that uh, we are related to this somehow, our mineralization, and uh, we're still figuring it out, but we, uh, you know, we like the regional story here, and that's a large part of what uh, we announced this morning, is that our regional work is, is finding anomalies that uh, suggest that there are more nickel-bearing intrusives to, uh, to chase here. Next slide. So, Taylor at Leyden, which is uh, the, the discovery outcrop, you'll, you'll uh, recall. What we have there is, uh, is outlined in green. It's, uh, it's a gabbronorite. Petrographically, it grades into noritic rocks and even peroxinitic rocks based on the, the petrography. And it's sort of, uh, it's been uh, squeezed somewhat. It's in, in north-south elongated. And uh, in the, uh, the bullets there, I'm showing you all of our high-grade intercepts. So within the, the southern end of the, the late, what we call the Leyden Gabronorite, we have some really nice intersections. We don't have ore widths, but we do have ore grades. Very, very encouraging. A little bit off the, um, the Leyden intrusive is a dike complex. It, it had been drilled by the past workers. We've drilled it with four or five more holes. We're getting the same sort of grade tenor, 1% nickel over, over a meter or a meter and a half. Everything is better once we get into the gabbronorite. The, what I call the western dike there, we've also age dated that, and it is, again, the same age, or the same relative age. So there's, there's a system going on here that we're still trying to understand, but uh, it's becoming clearer and clearer. Next slide, please. So this is an aerial view now from the drone, and, uh, and what you're seeing is that same pulse, the middle pulse, that's the one that I showed you a picture of earlier. And it's, uh, if I had a pointer, I could point it out. But what you're seeing is W folds. Oh, sorry, go back. Um, it's actually, there's a, there's a series of anticlines and synclines through that that you can see quite clearly there with the, the white gneiss rocks. And so it's, uh, it's all isoclinally folded and it's been overturned. Everything's dipping to the east and directly to the east, of course, is that great big gabbro complex. So. It's not a simple picture, but Don, Don sensed all this last year and, and, and knew it all this year, and then once we stripped it off, it, uh, it uh, was exactly what she said was going on. So there's several of these pulses over uh, about three or 400 meters of uh, elongated gabbronorite. Next slide, please. So there's some obvious areas where, uh, where we can drill it. On the right, what you're looking at is sort of a cartoonized longitudinal, looking, uh, looking at it in a, in a westerly sense. But, you know, we've got these shallow, high-grade intersections in the south part of that intrusive, and down below that is the next, the next place to drill. Um, it's not quite that simple, though, in that our geological model on the left, you are seeing all that intense folding. Now that was based only on our first 18 holes and we've drilled 36 or 33 holes. Um, so that's being refined as we speak. We've got, we do Televiewer on every hole, Borehole EM on every hole. The Borehole EM we're finding is, is generating the next target for, uh, for the, the subsequent hole. And Televiewer is just absolutely fantastic at, at discerning structures. Next slide, please. 
So regionally, we, uh, I was mentioning how excited we are about, uh, you know, about the big picture here, like what else is possible beyond chasing the laden, uh, the laden magmatic pulses. Uh, so we have instituted all summer long um, more regional soil sampling all along the western margin of the Taylorbrook Gabbro complex. As well, we've done some, some surface EM. It's generated a really nice target there that I have on the right. That's essentially below all those uh, high-grade intersections that, uh, that I was showing you. So really, going forward, they'll be drilling in the Leyden area, but as well following up anomalies generated from the, uh, from the regional work along the, along the Taylorbrook Gabbro. Next slide, please. This is just uh, what we announced this morning. So that magnetic feature that, uh, that is moving through those two images, that is our gabbronorite body. It's about 10 kilometers long. We've located it in several places on surface. We do have a logging road that seems to run right along it, which is very, very uh, serendipitous. Sorry, just go back. Yeah. And uh, down there in the south, we've got a whopping nickel anomaly that ac we've actually sent in the line cutters today. It, the bush is very, very thick, so uh, we're kind of old school. We cut grids and, and do all that stuff still. But um, very encouraging nickel, uh, nickel anomalies. There's chromite, there's copper, um, and cobalt as well in that area. So we're chasing that uh, as we speak. Next slide. And then this is just an inversion on the left. And, and what you're seeing there, where I have uh, the laden intrusive trend, is a very, very shallow, um, a shallow suite of rocks, essentially. And that is our gabbronorite bodies. And you can see just immediately to the east and to the west of it, to the west is the Grenville fabric. You're seeing very, very, uh, very deep rocks. And to the east, you're seeing the, the Taylorbrook Gabbro. So this is a, a real bonus for us in that we know it's only shallowly buried. It looks like it, it, uh, it only goes down to four or 500 meters. And in that sense, it's very, very similar to Tamarack. We're looking for a pool, basically, somewhere along this where, uh, you know, where sulfides would have pooled. Next slide. And yeah, just a summary, there's some of the, some of the core and uh, some really happy uh, prospector technicians and that's, that's the, uh, the laden channel sample there that ran, I think it was three and a half percent nickel or so. Moving on, next slide. So Florence Lake now. So Florence Lake is in Labrador, it is helicopter ac accessible only at this point. Uh, and that's myself and Lawrence Winter of Altius out there last summer looking at one of the showings. Uh, but here, this is an ex Falcon Bridge project that had a lot more work than Taylor Brook had ever had. And um, you know, at this one area called Bakey, there they've actually begun to, uh, to outline the beginning of uh, a classic Combalda style channel. Uh, moving on, next slide, please. So, location is very, very good, in fact, for uh, remote Canada in that. You know, we're only about 15 kilometers, 20 kilometers from uh, Tidewater, and that's where Falcon Bridge brought in a barge and their drill and fuel and that sort of thing in the past. Postville is a nice little community, very, very scenic. The ferry comes there twice a week, once on the way north and once on the way south. And it runs up until about, uh, well, the weather gets very severe in late November. So all of our, we are, we are putting in a camp um, on the property over the winter, as I mentioned, and. Uh, all of our canvas and big, you know, late lumber order and all of that, it's actually driven up on the, uh, on the ferry. So very, very cost effective. Uh, also daily flights into, uh, into Postville from Goose Bay. So, you know, it, it's, it's quite workable. Next slide, please. So geology here, completely different than what I was describing before. Now we're looking at volcanics, extrusive rocks and an intrusive rocks in a Combalda Comadiite type sequence, very, very old greenstones here, over three billion years, but uh, Falconbridge had uh, discovered the six nickel showings within the Ultramafix and did uh, something like 46 shallow drill holes back in the uh, early and mid 90s. Next slide. This is us out uh, actually salvaging the core last summer. So this is the Falconbridge core we got there just in time. The old core rack was about to, uh, about to fall apart, but um, very, very successful. We resampled all of the uh, critical intersections. We got the same sorts of results as they do, 
they did, sorry, and uh, you know, a lot, a lot of confidence moving forward. The, uh, the picture on the left there, that is the bakey showing. That's the uh, Kamadiites outcropping there, and that's the group of Altius and Churchill people. So um, not a lot of outcrop actually within these very soft ultramafic rocks, but the, the surrounding rocks do outcrop. And it gives us a lot, uh, a lot of picture. Moving on. Here is our VTEM survey, and it's very difficult for you to see, I know, but on the right there you're looking at the magnetics, and uh, there are conductor profiles along all of those, or all the lines that, that did have conductors. It's very encouraging in that, in that um, it's showing a lot of conductivity away from the known showings. It's the first survey of this type, um, and we flew it at 50 meter line spacing to, um, to try and refine and, and see as much as we can. Next slide. Yeah. Here's a bit of a detailed look at the bakey showing. So a lot of conductivity in that spot. Um, the known showing actually doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, light up. And that geochem sample, sample that I announced this morning with 1% nickel is actually up in the northern part of that grid. So it's not uh, where the known mineralization is. And next slide. This is just the geochem work that we are doing. Again, it was announced this morning, a lot of nickel anomalies and a lot of nickel anomalies that are away from the known showings. And last but not least, this was just the Falcon Bridges drilling in the Bakey area. Some glossy grades, but they, they really lost the mineralization with depth. I think there's a lot of structure going on there that we're going to discern uh, this winter with some more geophysics. And uh, obviously, we have the conductors to, uh, to drill.